This is the hottest place in the store. That's right, the fresh pepper section. Have you ever seen a jalapeno with small brown lines on it? It's called corking. The more corking, the hotter the pepper is. And I'm gonna be using this jalapeno to spice up my jalapeno lime chicken. I'm Michael Williams, and that's what we're cooking on the coast. Welcome to the kitchen. I'm feeling a little nutty today. How about you? No sense in fighting it. Let's embrace our nuttiness. On our menu is jalapeno lime chicken and peanut butter truffles. Let's get cooking. So we're gonna make a jalapeno lime, actually a peanut sauce, jalapeno lime peanut sauce. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some homemade oat milk to thin the peanut down, the peanut butter, once we get there. So the first thing we're gonna do is make our own oat milk. I've got some large flake oats here that I have soaked, soaked them for about 15 minutes, and we're gonna drain those off right now. When you're making oat milk, one of the keys is that little 15 minute soak. It kind of, you know, gets rid of a little bit of the starchiness and the sliminess, which is just what we're looking for. So that's gonna go right into the blender. This is such an easy process. You know, there's a lot of people out there with dairy sensitivities and whatnot. And you know, you get into buying the pre-made milk alternatives, it can get kind of expensive. So being able to make your own is a fantastic option and it's super easy, which I'm about to show you. We've got a date here. So we're gonna throw a date into our blender along with our soaked oats and some fresh water. So one cup of soaked oats, one date and three cups of water, maybe a pinch of salt. Just salt is always good. It helps bring out the flavor and whatever you're working with. And we're gonna buzz this up till it's nice and smooth. to 15 seconds, depending on your blender, but we want to get it nice and smooth. So that's going to do the trick for us. Now, if you're serving this as a drink, you may want to strain it, but because we're going to incorporate this into the sauce, there's no need to strain it, and I want all of that good nutrition, so I don't want to strain it. We'll just set this aside for the moment, and let's get started on frying up some jalapeno and garlic. So. To cut my jalapeno here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it into quarters, basically, and then once it's in quarters, I can easily remove the seeds and the veins. Now that we're in quarters, I like to turn it away, turn the, the stem end away from me, and we'll remove the seed and the vein. This removes a little bit of the heat, so you can, you can always leave a little bit of the seeds and veins in if you wanna kick the heat up. Now that we've done that, I'm gonna slice these basically as thin as I can. And I'm gonna leave them, you know, you have the option once you've finished making this sauce, you have the option to leave it as is or you can puree it until it's super fine. Now I was actually, I was thinking about leaving out onions because some people have allergies to onions, which I couldn't imagine living life. So you don't need the onion, but you know what? I'm gonna throw some onion in there. So as an option, we'll do half an onion here. We'll dice this fairly fine. Let's get some heat going on our, on our pot so we're ready to start simmering away, sauteing and simmering. And we'll take half of this onion here. Now, anytime you're cooking, it's always good to have a little container ready for compost. We want to keep our station clean, organized, and just like Mama said, keep a clean kitchen and your food will taste better. All right, so let's dice these onions, like so. And then, voila, we've got diced onion, beautiful. Okay, so we've got our onions, our jalapeno, and just a few cloves of garlic is gonna be great. So we'll crack those open. Now I always show you my trick with the pot or the frying pan, but you can also just use the side of your knife. And then crunch down like so. Remove those stem bits. And slice away. 
I'm slicing the garlic a little bit thin, just like I did with our jalapeno, so that we can, you know, enjoy nice, lovely bits of garlic in our sauce afterwards. So now that we've got some heat on our pan, let's grab our avocado oil, which is great for higher temperature cooking. So in goes the jalapeno, the onion, and the garlic. And we'll let that do its thing. Once our onions, garlic, jalapeno have sauteed, we're gonna add in our peanut butter, our oat milk, and some lime juice, and a little bit of apple cider vinegar as well. Apple cider vinegar, such a fantastic thing to incorporate into your diet. Raw apple cider vinegar with mother. We'll add that at the very end so it doesn't get compromised and remains relatively raw. All right, let's grab our chicken. We're ready to get that sauteing. I've also got some celery and carrots that I chopped up. And our uh, pan here should be nice and hot already. So in goes the avocado oil once again, since we're gonna be browning that chicken. In goes the chicken. Nice sizzle, that's what we're looking for. We'll save these guys for another day. And what we want to do is we want to brown that chicken on both sides, get some nice color on it. Since we're here, we can season it up. A little bit of salt and pepper. I'll put some on the other side after I flip it. And then as soon as it's flipped, I'm going to add in those carrots and the celery. In the meantime, let's carry on with our sauce. Nice brown happening here on the onions, the celery, or sorry, the onions, uh, garlic, and jalapeno. So let's get our peanut butter in. Nice healthy dose of peanut butter. It is, you know, the main portion of this sauce. So we want to get a nice shot of that in there. Probably about a cup. And then we're going to adjust the consistency basically is what it comes down to with our oat milk. So let's give this a stir. As our peanut butter warms up, it will kind of soften and dissolve. And let's go ahead and add our oat milk. Oh, what a nice consistency on that oat milk. It looks beautiful. Let's Go ahead and start right there and see where we get. Now, because I made the oat milk with the dates, there's gonna be a wonderful little sweetness to it, and it's gonna be fantastic. You know, a nice little balance to the heat of the jalapeno. Heat and, and sweet, they go together so nicely. And in fact, you know, if you've cooked a dish and it's too hot, you can always dial it down a little bit by adding some honey or some maple syrup or some sweetness to it. So a little bit more oat milk. We're looking good here. I think we're ready to turn our chicken. Beauty. Okay, and let's add in our celery and carrots. We won't need all of these. We'll get some of them in there. And if you're finding you need to add a touch of water to your sauce, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. So I think, you know, I made I think I might have made this oat milk just a touch too thick. So I'm just gonna add some straight water and we're ready to get our sauce in. And then we will get that into our roasting pan here. The smells are incredible. I'm getting the heat. I'm getting all kinds of great flavor coming out of here. And what we're gonna do now to capture this is add our lid and just let it go for a little while until that chicken's cooked all the way through. We'll be back later in the show to pull together our jalapeno lime chicken and we're gonna make those peanut butter truffles. But first, we're hitting the road. Catch you after the break. is brought to you by Cold Star Solutions, an integral part of Vancouver Island's grocery supply chain for 20 years. We're here at Island Nut Roastery in Sydney to learn all about making peanut butter. Jesse, hey, how's it going? Good, how are you? Good, I'm fantastic. So what's in your peanut butter? Uh, peanuts. Just peanuts? Just peanuts. So how do you take a handful of peanuts and turn it into peanut butter? Well, I'll show you. All right. Cool.
Wow, that is a lot of peanuts. And it's already half gone. How, how heavy was this when it rolled in? It was 2,200 pounds or one metric ton. And uh, where did these peanuts come from? They come from Texas or Georgia and states, uh, yep. depending on what farm we buy them from. Okay, and I see you've got a, a whole bunch of peanuts trade up already. What's, what's happening here? So this is the first step. After we get our bag, we open her up. Yeah. We fill them in. Two uh, racks of 14 okay. uh, for 28. And then we need to roast them. Yes, we do. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to bring them over, put them in the ovens. Let's roast some peanuts, shall we? So. Okay, so these are going in the oven. How, how, how hot? How uh, hot 300 talking? degrees for about an hour and a half to two hours, depending on how many are in there. Okay, so in they go, hour and a half, two hours, and they just come out like that? Or they do, yeah. Do we need to stir them throughout the process? Yeah, we stir them every 15 minutes, Okay. Uh, 10 minutes for the last one. Now, uh, may, may I try? You can go right okay. ahead. Okay, so they taste delicious, but not quite as good as your peanut butter. What's gonna happen next? So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna cool them because mm -hmm. we grind all our peanuts cold. Yeah. Then we're gonna bring them over to the grinders and grind them into peanut butter. Can we grind some peanuts right now into peanut butter? We can. Really? Yeah. Let's do it. And so just like that, peanuts are getting turned into peanut butter. Exactly, it grinds it all. We don't add anything. It's just straight from the nuts into the butter. Amazing, me as a chef, I love that. Clean, pure, simple, yeah. easy to work with. All right, so it looks like we got enough peanut butter in the second hopper. What's the next step now? You're gonna pull up chair, sit uh -huh. down. Okay, okay. I, I can handle that, right I can handle that. So it yeah. looks like we got a nice clean jar here. We do. Yeah, I'm just gonna go like so and yeah. the, the foot pedal. We have yeah. a foot pedal here. Okay. So you're gonna give it a squeeze. Okay. Give it a little tap. Give it another squeeze. There you oh, go. that one's too full. That's mine. Yeah. <laughs> so can I taste this right now? Uh, you shouldn't. It should sit in a jar for a day. Uh -huh. It needs to kind of like get to know itself and figure oh. out what it's gonna taste like. Okay, okay. So uh, we have a prepared jar already. Shall we? Oh, we I'd can. love to. Okay, so let's give this a taste. This my favorite part of the show. You've probably done this a lot though, hey? I have. Mm -hmm. So, nice texture to it. It's not super crazy smooth, right? No, our smooth is a little crunchier than your like normal store brand. Okay. Because it's just peanuts. Right, just yeah. peanuts. Super clean, super simple. For those of you at home who have not tried all natural peanut butter, honestly, it's the only way to go. This stuff's amazing. Whether you're making peanut butter cookies or getting creative and making a peanut butter sauce, this is it. Jesse, thank you so much. This has been awesome. No problem. We're back in the kitchen pulling together our jalapeno lime chicken and then we're going to make some peanut butter truffles. Now, chicken is well underway, looking beautiful, very close, but it's only jalapeno chicken at this point. We still need to get that lime juice in there as well as the apple cider vinegar. We're going to put both of those in right at the end just to finish it off. Let's talk about some peanut butter truffles. So we've got this beautiful all natural peanut butter here. It is just peanuts, fantastic. Now. You might not know this, but peanuts aren't actually nuts. They're legumes, go figure. We are gonna add in a cup. And you know you know how I roll. I'm, I'm not big on measuring spoons and measuring cups, but the recipes always have the exact measurements laid out. So feel free to follow the recipe. We're gonna go with about equal portions though. One cup of peanuts, one cup of oat flour. I made this myself. Took large flake oats, ground them up in the food processor or in your Vitamix, your blender, what have you. So about equal portions of the oat flour with the peanut butter. We want a little bit of honey as well. Now I have the oats on there, so I'm gonna grab a clean spoon because we don't want to contaminate our honey. And this is where our sweetness is gonna come from. So I'm now gonna use this spoon to stir things up. We'll get everything mixed together. We're also going to add in a little bit of vanilla, some vanilla extract. Beautiful. Okay, and what we want to do is get everything nicely incorporated. Bring it all together so that we can roll it into balls. And once we roll it, then we're going to coat it in chocolate. I've got some beautiful 70% cocoa chocolate here on the stove top, which is going to make for a beautiful chocolate crust or chocolate coating, I should say, on our uh, peanut butter truffle. Next up is our 
Krispies, our Rice Krispies. These are Cocoa Krispies. We're gonna stir those into the, the peanut mixture here and our truffle will now be ready to be coated. Now the truffle was actually invented by culinary giant Escoffier back in 1920. And you know, most of us know what chocolate truffles are these days, so they've come a long way since way back in the day. Now let us form our balls here. They can be different sizes. You can customize them, you can make them bigger. I like them, you know, about the size of, what would you say that is? Half of a ping pong ball. So like so. And then once we get them rolled up, then we're ready to coat them in chocolate. Now just make sure that they are, are together and we don't have a big hole in the middle, which sometimes you will run into. All right, so let's, let's, let's dunk these. They're ready. We'll uh, do the rest of those another, another time. I'm gonna stir up this chocolate now. So I've got this chocolate sitting on a bain-marie, which is basically simmering water very gently, very gently, so that it's not touching the bottom of the bowl. And then when I stir this in, the remaining chocolate should help us get a nice temper. So stir in those chunks, and then we're ready to dunk our peanut butter balls. And that's done just as simply as this. Take your peanut butter creations, drop them into the chocolate. Make sure they're nice and coated. You want to get every little spot covered with peanut butter, or with chocolate, let me say. And then the key is we don't want that chocolate too thick. So you really want to kind of tap it off a little bit and then onto the plate. And we'll repeat that process. until we're nicely coated. And we're gonna be laughing once we're eating these guys for dessert. They are so delicious. Fantastic uh, recipe to make ahead of time. Make a whole bunch, keep them in the fridge, and you've got a super nutritious, delicious snack at, at a moment's notice. All right, so let us now plate up our chicken. Beautiful chicken ready to go. We're gonna splay out. We've gotta, gotta clean up the koala crisp that I spilt earlier. We'll start there. Let's take a look at this. Oh yeah. So what I wanna do here is I'm gonna pull out those chicken breasts, put them on the plate, and then I'm gonna finish off the sauce. Like so. And like so. As I mentioned, we're gonna finish it off with a little bit of lime juice and just a touch of that apple cider vinegar. And actually, let me just say, you wanna make sure you shake that apple cider vinegar so you get the mother incorporated into it. Really important step. Couple dribbles of that. Give it a stir. Beautiful, oh, this looks amazing. So. Let's make this easy. Bring the plate over to our chicken. Give it a nice liberal coating of the sauce with those veggies. Oh yeah, this looks fantastic. It smells incredible. The peanut, the jalapeno, the lime create for an incredible combination. I can't wait to tuck into this. In fact, spoon it needs to be cleaned no two ways about it there you have it jalapeno lime chicken and peanut butter truffles pairings are brought to you by liquor plus discover the plus there's no better way to enjoy a delicious culinary creation than with a fantastic beer. I'm here with Sasha Lauren from Lighthouse <laughs> Brewing. Welcome to the kitchen. Thank you so much yeah. for having us. So uh, we, we got on the phone earlier. I mm -hmm. told you what I was going to cook for you today between the uh, jalapeno lime peanut chicken yes. as well as the peanut butter truffles. Desserts and, I'm uh, excited for. Yeah, yeah. I think you've, uh, you've got something lined up for us here to... 
I do, to I enjoy. do. So I've brought a couple of things from our lineup, but we're going to focus on the uh, Lighthouse Citra Shore today. It's a session ale. Are you familiar with the session ale? No, you know, session ale seems to be a very common kind of thing these days, mm -hmm. but I, actually I don't. Please yeah, explain. Yeah, so it's, it's for anybody who wants to enjoy a nice hoppy beer, but okay. with a lower alcohol content. And that's okay. pretty much it. If you don't want to, you know, do the 6% and higher, right. like most of the traditional IPAs you're seeing out there. Yeah, okay. It's a little bit of a lower alcohol, so, nice and crushable. Great, uh, just summertime relaxing kind of beer. Oh yeah. Yeah. So we'll pour some up. And so you're going to try it with the chicken and yeah. I'm going to go for the truffles. Right on. That sounds delicious. I'm going to, I'm, I'm just going to, I'm going to taste this first. Yeah, right I, off the bat. Cheers. cheers. So you get lots mm, of citrus okay. right in the aroma and the yeah. flavor. Let me, let me go like this. You want one of those. Yes, thank I'm you. I'm going to go right over here. All right. And let's see how this bon pairs appetite. up. Yeah, this is interesting. You don't normally pair up uh, a beer with two different dishes, but it's, yeah, I think this awesome. might work, right? Okay. So mm. the spice, the heat, the peanut, the richness. Mm -hmm. Now it's time to see. Oh, you have to try this. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm it going is to. Perfect. This is fantastic as well. Mm -hmm. That is awesome. I love it. Now. Lighthouse Brewing has been around for a long time. That's right. This beer right here, though. Mm, oh my yes, goodness. Yes, has that's a cult-like following. Yeah, it, 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 I don't understand how you fit so much coffee flavor into there. I wish I could take credit, yeah. but I'll leave that to the brewers. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. But yeah, Lighthouse, uh, tell us a little bit more. Yeah, so we're actually coming up on our 21st uh, year. Really? So uh, we were one of the original craft breweries on Vancouver Island, okay. so it's really exciting. We've been doing it a long time yeah. and continue to put out um, fresh, fun, seasonal beers. Right. Just got our tasting room going as well, so okay. that's starting to pick up. I'm gonna have up. to come and check that out. I have not been there please yet. Please do. I'd yeah. be happy to take you through a flight of beer. That would be amazing. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, anything else you'd like to throw out about Lighthouse Brewery? Uh, uh, just that this, you know, this is working out better than I thought it would. You know, it's uh, it's a fantastic pairing. So thank you so much for having us here today. Yeah, absolutely. It's been a pleasure. Uh, I'm gonna continue enjoying this, and I think it's gonna be a go-to pairing for me. Yes, thank you, for you gotta being in the send me this today. recipe. I, I, I'm gonna do that. Absolutely. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Check out the website where you find details on today's recipe. I'm Michael Williams. Thanks for watching, and don't forget, dinner is better when we eat it together. Cheers to that. Yeah. I'm gonna try this combination mm -hmm. right here. It actually is great. Mm -hmm.